Hello and welcome to Great Craps. Today we're going to build a small craps table using the small layout, the most affordable one that you can find online right now. It's a nice material. Uh, I had this one left over from my first craps table that I built. Uh, it was too small for the size that I built that table and so I upgraded to a larger layout and I'm left with this one. So we're going to build another table using it. So let's get right to it. So I, I flipped this layout over. You can see that on the underside, all the way around the edge, I've had Velcro sewn. I had a, a friend just sew me some uh, plain, non-sticky, uh, three-quarter inch Velcro all the way around the edges. Uh, she put just a little fold over seam, just a tiny little fold over seam in there, and then sewed the hook side of the Velcro to the edges. And you'll see why that is later. So with that Velcro sewed on, if we flip it over, we get a slightly different measurement from edge to edge. And so that comes out to be just right at three feet, 36 inches on the width or the depth from the top of the layout to the bottom of the layout and 52 inches from end to end and so based on that we know the measurements that we're going to need for our board so we'll fold this up and get it out of the way you always want to start with your layout and you, if you're going to do the velcro you want to get that done first because that everything will, you do will change the dimensions that you cut everything to slightly. So we want to make sure that we only cut once and then we get it right the first time. And so for that reason, start with your layout. Make sure you get your layout first and then go from there because sometimes they will vary slightly uh, in the printing process and so on. So start with the layout that you're going to have. Get the layout, go from there. So plywood comes in four by eight sheets or you can get it in half sheets of four by four with this layout being 52 inches that's just over four feet so it's a little bit long for the width of a normal sheet of plywood so you're stuck buying a full sheet of plywood or you can buy some smaller sheets and flip them sideways I happen to have these um, in my garage they just happen to work out to be the right size that I need. So what I have here is two pieces cut to three feet by 26 inches each and put together, they give me the 52 that I need. So what I'm gonna do with this, and the reason why I don't mind them being cut pretty much exactly in half is I'm going to hinge the back side of this so that I can fold the whole thing over like so and put it in my car and take it somewhere. Maybe play at a friend's house and so on. So this actually works out nicely for me, but it's a nice alternative. Now, you don't have to do that. If you just want one solid piece as your bottom, your base, that's fine. But in my case, uh, I want a really portable table since this is a small layout. And so that's what I'm gonna do. And I'll show you later on in the video how we accomplish that. So I've gone ahead and cut these to size and we're ready to move on to the next step. Uh, if you've noticed here, my, my workbench is uh, one kind of plywood. The base is another kind of a plywood. So just distinguish this, this plywood here is the plywood that's actually gonna be my base. This chip style plywood is my, just my workbench. So our next step is gonna to be to go ahead and apply the felt to one end of our craps table, one of the short ends, and the bases, uh, both top and bottom on the bases. Now, you can go ahead and put felt all the way around if you don't wanna stain, but for this particular build, I'm gonna stain the outside, except for the bottom, and put felt on the inside just to soften up the walls a little bit for where there isn't any craps rubber and as the underlayment for the layout that's gonna go on top of everything. 
Uh, felt, if you get the nice thickness of felt from the fabric store, makes a really great underlayment. And for this type of plywood, it has that distinct sound that you're looking for, like you find in most casinos. So I'm using a different color for the end. Uh, this is going to be the end that doesn't have the diamond rubber. I'm only putting diamond rubber on one end because I'm going to make this other end where I can drop it and basically throw the, through the empty end of the table and have a longer throwing distance. So for that end, it doesn't have the crafts rubber. We want to try and kind of match it and also match the layout. So we're using green for that. For everything else, I'm using a black felt. I may go with a different color for the underside just to distinguish which side is the underside and which side is the top side. So uh, we're going to use, in this case, uh, Scotch spray adhesive 77. Um, this I found at my local Walmart. Um, it's not too expensive. It's kind of the middle of the road for spray adhesive, but I've used this before and I find that it works well and it's pretty forgiving. It gives you a little bit of time to adjust as you're going along. So well-ventilated area. I know I'm not exactly in a well-ventilated area, but I'm going to shoot this piece and then I'm going to shut everything down, open the garage door, finish it out with plenty of ventilation. So you got to be careful of your overspray areas. You don't want to overspray anything with glue that you don't want glue on because uh, it does tend to stick around for a while. Oh, pun intended. So this comes out in a nice flat sort of spray. And I've already got my felt ready to go and folded back. Uh, I took an iron to it and got all the creases from where I had it folded up for storage. Got all of those out before I started this. Um, I'm sure you guys don't want to be entertained by watching me use the handy dandy iron to iron felt out. And already I can feel my skin getting sticky just from the overspray in the air in here. So I'm going to lay that over. It does tend to stick up real quick, so get it down. Then we're going to take a straight edge and flatten it out nicely. Now, in this case, the piece that I'm using is a little bit oversized for the board. What we'll do is we'll flip it over, take a nice sharp razor blade and trim it up. And this, In this particular case, I am not wrapping around the edges of the board because some of those edges might be showing later on. So we're just going to smooth it down nice and flat. Set it aside to set up and dry. Now this next piece was cut to size already. So again, mindful of the other overspray. So I'm going to get this piece out of the way, set it off to the side over here. So I don't get any overspray on it. And this piece we're going to do sort of, it's a little bigger. So we're going to do sort of one half at a time. We'll do one side, flip it around, do the other side. You do have to go a little bit quick. It does like to set up fairly quickly. Some plywood, some different types of wood will uh, tend to soak a lot more of this stuff up. You don't want to go too heavy though because it will soak through the felt and give you some sticky spots that you don't really want. So we're gonna line that up nicely. Go ahead and press down and work our way this direction. got a nice straight edge on on this one side here this is the middle that I'm working with right now this is where the two boards will mesh together so I want to get these these edges really nice and squared up so when you put them together there's almost no noticeable seam underneath the layout we got that side done we're gonna go ahead and flip Peel it back just a little bit so that I don't have a gap anywhere. Hit the other side. 
Well, that's a full can there. I picked up the brand new can instead of the can I was using. So we're gonna go a little heavy on this side, I guess. Just for good measure. Get the corners pretty well so you get good sticky adhesion to the corners. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we cover all the sides in felt. Uh, we want a nice soft surface on the bottom side as well as the top in case we uh, put this on, let's say the dining room table or whatnot. And when we do the bottom side, we're gonna actually go ahead and wrap that around the edges and spray glue and wrap the edges. Uh, you might even throw in a couple staples on the edges because we want that to hold down really well. When we put our layout on, <coughs> the Velcro is gonna come around the sides and wrap around the sides and actually stick to this, the felt there on the edges. So we want that to stay on really well and we want it to come from the bottom so as it pulls, it's pulling against the felt and just not peeling the felt away. What I've also done here is gone ahead and put piano hinges on the bottom side, on the edges. Um, I have happened to acquire a two foot by four foot little small desk. It's about 27 inches from the floor, so it's perfect for a craps table. Um, and it being 24 inches wide, I still have enough space in between the hinges to put this on top of it and it sit overhanging the desk and not interfere with the hinges. But in case I put it on a regular table that's a, a bigger size than this, then I went ahead and put these feet on. They're just little nail-in uh, plastic feet with a little felt sticky pad that goes on the, on the bottoms of them. And you just nail them in, fix the, the sticky felt to the top, and uh, that gives you some padding <laughs> to offset uh, this hinge so you don't scratch up your table or anything like that. Of course, if you're doing one solid piece, you don't need to do any of this. The felt on the bottom is gonna serve the purpose of keeping your table from getting scratched up and so on. So <clears throat> now I can fold it up and uh, load it up in the car pretty easily, throw it in the trunk, so on. If you don't have a very large car, you don't have room to, to carry the whole piece of board. It's now half the size that it was before. Uh, it actually will go this way and the layout will go on top, Velcro down, and then we can put the sides on. And so that'll be next. So besides the plywood for the base, we also went to the hardware store and picked up some other boards. Uh, these are called paint grade panels. Uh, at my local hardware store, these four boards cost about $50. And so basically they're uh, three foot by 12 inches. They're all 12 inches in width. Uh, two three foot boards and two six foot boards. Unfortunately, a four foot board would be too short. So the next level up is six foot. Uh, they are about three quarters of an inch thick. It'll say one inch, but they're really three quarters of an inch. They're really actually a little bit less than that. Uh, we don't really care about the thickness. It's the width and the length of the board. So one other thing to consider here. These scrap ends are gonna be about 19 inches and some change. The end board is 36 inches. If I take both scrap pieces at 18 inches each, that comes out to 36 inches if you put the two ends together. So you could take the two ends, connect them with a bridging piece of scrap wood and have your other end just off of these scrap ends. Save yourself buying another board and you've got the same wood that you used on the sides as your end. Just something else to think about if you wanna save a little extra money. So I'm gonna break all this down, go make the cuts on these boards and I'll be right back. So we have those cut. I've gone ahead and clamped it up with some corner clamps, mocked it up and put the diamond rubber in. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is mark up where the cutouts are gonna be on both sides. 
Um, on this table, I'm going to make both sides cutouts identical. Uh, stick man and box man, either side, doesn't matter. Uh, on a normal longer length table, your box man or bank side cutout would be a lot larger than the cutout on the stick man side. In this case, uh, we're just going to make them identical on either side. So, a few key measurements that go into that and some interesting craps knowledge. There are seven diamonds from bottom to top on the craps rubber. And that comes out to about seven inches tall from the top of the table. Um, what you have left over from the top of the diamonds to the top of the wood is about four and a half inches. And so what we want is for the bottom or the top of the cutout to be even with the top of the diamonds. So as the diamonds come along, there's the cutout at the top of that. So that comes out about four and a half inches down. Um, get yourself a nice little square. Uh, it doesn't have to be metal. They make them in plastic. A lot of times they're orange, but very handy tool to use here. And it's already got a nice 45 degree angle. So we're gonna come along and mark 45 degree angles with that. We're gonna go down four and a half inches. I've already kind of worked this out. So we're gonna come in a full foot, 12 inches. from the end of the board and we'll just mark that up and then we'll go from there line up our square and just mark the angle Nice built-in 45 degree there. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Come 12 inches off the end of the board. Mark that up. Come in with a square. Get the line all the way across. Come on this side. Set the square in there. Mark our 45 degree line. And from there, we're just going to come down four and a half inches. And run a line all the way down, crossing those two diagonal lines. And that will be the top of our cut. So we'll put this on the saw and cut it out. The uh, cool thing about a square is it has these nice notches in it. So you can literally put the tip of your pencil in there and run it along to get your line. So we'll do that real quick. It works better if you're pushing it. So four and a half inches. Just run the line. And then you can come back and clean it up, make it a little darker, but you got the idea. So we'll do that on both sides, mark it up, and then we'll put it on the saw and cut those out. When we cut these out, uh, since I'm using a circular saw, I don't have a table saw, uh, we're going to cut them almost all the way down, leave a little space, and then we'll follow up either with a hand saw or a, a little jigsaw to get all the way down in the corners. We want these to be kind of nice and clean. Um, we don't want any overlap in the cuts when we go down. Circular saw will do that, so we're just going to stop a little bit short, finish off the cuts either way with the uh, handsaw.
So when you're all finished with those cuts, you should end up with two side pieces that look like this. Go ahead and take a sander and smooth out the tops of the cuts and the corners where your two saw cuts met each other. Just make them nice and clean, clean them up a little bit. And then go ahead and just slightly round off the edges at the top of the board. This is where you're gonna be standing as the stick or dealer. So you kind of want a soft edge there on that. We're not gonna do that to the rest of the top of the board or anything like that, just the cutout area where we did our cuts. And after that, we're ready to move on to our next step. So to hold everything together in the corners, sides and ends, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some two by two. You can either get uh, four feet of two by two, or you can get two feet of two by four and rip that two by four into two by twos. But you're gonna need basically four pieces of this. We're gonna cut them to 11 and 1 8 inches. If you wanna get this exact, you can go ahead and set the piece on, cut them a little longer than they need to be, set the piece on the flat surface of your table, line up your end of your board and mark it, and then cut that precisely. We want those not to stick up above the edge when we put them in the corners. We want them to be just right. They can go below, but ideally they'll be flush with the side piece, the top of the side piece on the end and the side. Um, I went ahead and ripped mine. You can use a table saw if you're really handy with a circular saw. You can do it with a circular saw. Be careful in either case because anytime you rip a, a board, uh, it can get a little bit unsafe. So let's go ahead and get the sides set. As you can see, I already did the other side. Uh, but what basically we're going to do is we're going to take those corner pieces and we're going to put them on top of the table, nice and even. Uh, go ahead and get this one out of the way first. And we are going to set that as squarely as we can get it on the edge. And on the ends, we're going to come down three inches and mark our spot there. And come up three inches from the bottom and mark our spot there. And on the sides, Just to offset, we're going to come down two inches and mark our, our spot there and come up two inches and mark our spot there. When we're doing this, we want to make sure we're lining it up so that it's centered on the uh, cut down piece, the two by two, um, so that your screw is going to go straight into the middle of that piece. I want it as centered as possible, and that's why we do three inches on one side and two inches on the other side so that those screws don't end up hitting each other as they go in. So I've already pre-drilled these. So we're going to use a clamp, make sure we uh, hold our piece tightly to it, get it nice and lined up, resting with the, the bottom of the connecting piece right on your top there, and the top flush nice and even on the sides. And then we'll drill our hole. Make sure you use a countersink bit when you're doing these. We want our, our screw to go in uh, nice and flush with the board. And then um, we're using an inch and five eighths, one inch and five eighths, one and five eighths inch uh, drywall screws here to uh, connect everything together. So <clears throat> we want to want to get those set. Go ahead and zip them in. And then set up the other side. After you pre-drill, you should be able to find that hole pretty easily. Uh, if you are using two drills like I am, you can just go ahead and drill and then throw the screw in right behind the pilot hole that you drilled. You definitely want to drill the pilot hole with a smaller bit, otherwise you could very easily split this piece of 2x2. Two So screw those in nice and tight. And you may consider doing this with your layout already on just because that little bit of extra uh, room that adds may give you a little gap here that you actually want. Uh, so 
if you don't, you'll end up sort of pulling everything tight when you drop the top over the, the felt when you put everything back together anyway, so that's fine. Nice. No need to staple. Everything's Velcroed around. Stuck to the sides. Nice and smooth. Get it nice and tight. You can adjust it if you need to. I can take this layout off, throw it in the washing machine, wash it. It's nice and clean. And there we go. This is where having just a little bit of wriggle room pays off. So again, you may want to put your layout on before you do your sides. But if you don't, yeah, you still have enough to uh, get a nice tight fit. So you can go ahead and throw your rubber in the end. And you can put a little mark on your uh, center of your rubber. The uh, rubber's four feet, so just come in two feet, 24 inches, and, and mark it. Mark the center of your board, line it up, get your center, and then you can just push your, uh, just push your ends in. And you don't really need to screw this down or anything like that. It'll stand up pretty well on its own. If you want, maybe you could uh, throw some sticky back Velcro on there and put a, a matching piece on the back side of the board just to get that top to sit. Uh, and I have another one of these that stands up a lot better. This one is a little bit more flexible, but uh, even if you get this pull away like that, you can just Velcro it down. No need for screws. It kind of ruins the look of it and ruins the, the rubber to me. So <laughs> you throw that in there and bam. Now you have a craps table. So the basics are here. Uh, you can stop here if you want, or you could go on ahead and finish it out a little bit. Uh, you could put end caps on. You could put your chip rails around the ends and the edges uh, on either side. Uh, you can look at my other video for the design I have for that on my uh, slightly bigger table. But if you just want to go from here, you've got plenty of room on the table itself for just some, some uh, chip racks. You've got space there for it to set them down just as a practice table. You can take the end off and lay the felt down, because remember we put felt on that end, and put it on a smaller table, either eight or 12 or 14 or maybe even 18 feet out um, either on the end or sideways and use that as your throwing station to get greater distance through the open end down here and so you have a full size more like a full size table to to throw at and practice um, but if you want to stop there that's it you're done you can leave it unfinished like this or you can stain it which is what i'm going to do i'm going to take this part again take it outside and stain it We'll come back and show you what the finished product on that looks like. So that's the crafts table. We'll come back and see what it looks like all stained up and, and pretty and nice and uh, go from there. All right. So there we go. We got it all stained up. Got the bank in. Got all the accessories on the table. Take a look at it. See how it looks. You know, looking pretty nice. Just got it sitting on a little desk I found on Facebook. Just freestanding on there. Get felt on that end. Remember that end comes off, so you can throw it through the open end. Get our diamond rubber in on the opposite end. 
chip rack for the player. I remember it's just held on with uh, a couple little Velcro pieces just to keep it in place. And that's it. So if you like this build video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And remember, don't just be good, be great. Thanks for watching. Great craps.